Hello everyone, this is Jackie's Movie. In this issue, let's look at an American revenge film, Blue Ruins. Dwight was a homeless man. He made a living by inspecting junk and food and often sneaked into unmanned homes to bathe. He slept in a dilapidated blue car at night. Dwight's parents were killed many years ago. He and his sister were the only ones left with hatred in their hearts. When he knew that his enemy was about to be released from prison, he resolutely launched his revenge. Dwight took out the long stored battery and a barrel of oil from the trunk, put it on a broken car that hadn't been started for a long time and embarked on the road of revenge. But the money he earned from picking up rags couldn't afford a gun. So he could only take advantage of the night and steal a gun from someone else's car. The person knew this gun was locked by the owner. Dwight couldn't help to break the lock after smashing it for a long time, instead, he smashed the gun. After that, he drove to the gate of the prison overnight and waited until the enemy Wade was released. The Clellans was very considerate, knowing that life in prison was not easy. As soon as he came out, they hurriedly took him to vent. Dwight sneaked in through the back door and sneaked into the toilet waiting for an opportunity. After a while, Wade came. He saw Wade washing his face through the crack of the door beside him. He seized the opportunity to raise the knife and rush out to stab Wade's neck. But the knife didn't hit the point but was caught by the opponent. Dwight struggled for a moment and suddenly remembered that he still held a knife in his hand. He hit Wade with a flick. After taking revenge, Dwight ran out the door and punctured the opponent's tire. Just as he was about to drive away, he found that the car's key was on the scene of the crime. In a hurry, Dwight could only run away in the opponent's car. Halfway down the road, Dwight suddenly noticed that Wade's brother, William, was sitting behind the car. The two looked at each other for a moment, and Dwight spoke Wade killed his parents, so he came to take revenge. But William said Wade did not kill Dwight's parents. After talking, he hurriedly fled. Dwight was stunned and didn't know why. He realized from William's words that things were not that simple. Dwight threw the car through the woods and saw a family. He squatted on the opposite side and watched for a long time and found outdated newspapers scattered in front of the house. It must have been unoccupied for many days. So Dwight went in without any scruples to wash and treat the wound and clean the body thoroughly. Then he flipped through the news reports on TV but he didn't see the news about Wade's murder. Dwight guessed that since the other party didn't call the police, he was probably going to retaliate. But the Clellans couldn't find him, so they would definitely find his sister's residence. So, Dwight rushed to his sister's house in advance to tell all the facts and details. Although his sister hated the Clellans, she didn't want to put her children in danger. And Dwight's approach was undoubtedly pushing their family to the brink of death. But the matter was over, his sister complained about Dwight and took the child away from home and hid. Late at night, Dwight, who dared not close his eyes, suddenly saw his broken car on the side of the road. He knew it was the Clellans that had already started quietly. Dwight did not dare to act rashly, he went upstairs and turned on the bathroom light and faucet to confuse the opponent. Then he ran to the living room downstairs to hide. Sure enough, the other party ran towards the bathroom as soon as he entered the door. Dwight took the opportunity to sneak out and drove the broken car to escape. But the other party quickly noticed and chased out the door. Dwight didn't hesitate and drove into it. He didn't know the other party he had just hit was his sister. He got out of the car and dragged the unconscious person to the back seat and tortured himself after being out of danger. Unexpectedly, Dwight's dragging the road gave the opponent's accomplices a chance. An arrow hit his thigh. Dwight panicked and hurriedly drove away from here. He was in pain after being hit by the arrow, so he had to park the car in the field first. He put the unconscious person in the trunk. Then he broke the arrows and bought some medical supplies at the pharmacy to deal with the arrows on the legs. He pulled along the wound for a long time. The pain was unbearable. He had to go to the hospital to ask a doctor for treatment. When he woke up from a coma, the injury on his leg had been solved properly. Dwight could not afford to pay for the medical expenses, so he sneaked out of the hospital and returned to the field where he kept the car. The person in the trunk was sober at this time, and Dwight did not dare to bother. He changed his clothes and ran to seek help from his former friend. Ben was a shooting enthusiast with a 16-acre shooting range. Dwight wants to ask him to hold the gun to deal with the people in the trunk. Ben was very loyal, not only to provide guns for Dwight, but also to teach him fighting and gun skills. Dwight shook his head and refused, he had no intention of accepting training. He just wanted to end this headache quickly. Then, Dwight found a clearing in the shooting range and released the man in the trunk. This person was Wade's brother, Teddy. He wanted to take revenge privately, just like Dwight had originally thought. Unfortunately, he broke his leg. Dwight didn't want to waste time. He said straight to the point that he went to the police station to surrender himself. He hoped the Clellans could let my sister go, and that was it. Teddy disagreed, it was too easy for Dwight to go to jail. Besides, Wade was not a murderer at all. It turned out that Dwight's father had an affair with Teddy's mother. 
After Teddy's father found out that he was betrayed, he cruelly killed Dwight's father. But at that time, Teddy's father was terminally ill, and the two sons didn't want his father to die in prison, so he volunteered to help him, and Teddy had two previous convictions, only his innocent brother could be sentenced to a lighter sentence. Only then did Dwight realize that he killed the wrong person. But now that the big mistake had been made, he could only think of a perfect solution that would not allow his sister to be implicated and that could completely end this grievance. So Dwight asked Teddy to contact his family to make an appointment in a public place to talk. Unexpectedly, Teddy tricked Dwight into answering the phone. When Dwight approached, Teddy immediately rushed to grab the gun and turned into a hunter. When Teddy was about to shoot Ad, Ben hiding in the distance fired. Ben was worried about his friend, but he didn't want to bother him for revenge. So he kept hiding in secret. Dwight understood that with the death of Teddy and Wade he had to pay lives for the Clellans. So he decided to take the initiative. Then, Dwight learned the key to shooting with the help of Ben. This time, Ben was still ready to secretly follow to assist. Unexpectedly, Dwight had known his friend's intention and removed the battery from his car in advance to protect his friend from being implicated. Later, Dwight broke into Teddy's house but found that there was no one in the room. To prevent emergencies, Dwight found out all the guns from Teddy's house and threw them into the lake. He went out to see Teddy's father's tombstone. The anger rose from his heart. He went into the house and gulped, then spit on the monument to relieve his hatred. Dwight waited for the whole night but he couldn't see the Clellans come back. He dug a hole to bury Teddy, and he left a message on Teddy's home phone. Finally, on this evening, the Clellans returned, as a reply to Dwight's message. Dwight stuck out from behind the wall with a gun, but couldn't get it off. He thought that if revenge bred revenge, would there ever be an end to it? If it could be resolved peacefully, there would be no need to die. But when he learned that this group went to find his sister to seek revenge last night, he shot and killed one of them without hesitation. Unexpectedly, seeing that the situation in the house was not right, William quietly finally put a cold gun behind Dwight, and everyone here knew that William was the illegitimate son of Dwight's father and Teddy's mother. Dwight advised William to wipe off the fingerprints on the gun and drove his car away from the dispute. William glanced at the two sisters standing opposite, silently exiting the house. Two sisters rushed forward to block bullets. A submachine gun that was quickly pulled out and hidden on the side of the sofa. Da 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 da, and Dwight and the two sisters died together. Finally, the movie came to an end in William's disillusionment. The enemy and relatives were dead, and the fight was over. Okay, this is the end of this issue. Friends who like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you next time.